Hey, you're getting better. Dear Tim and Moby, what can you tell me about the Harlem Renaissance? From Bluebird 23. The word Renaissance means rebirth. The Harlem Renaissance took place during the 1920s. It was a time when the African-American artistic community grew and flourished, producing a ton of work in a short period of time. The work celebrated African-American culture and spoke to their experiences as minorities, both the good parts and the bad parts. Starting in the late 1870s, many African-Americans left the South to escape unfair treatment and laws that discriminated against them. Between 1910 and 1920, massive numbers of black Southerners moved from the rural South into the urban North and West in the Great Migration. The African American population of Chicago more than doubled during that time. And in New York, African Americans flocked to uptown Manhattan, settling in a neighborhood called Harlem. Forming a community within the big city let African Americans keep their cultural identity in a white-dominated society. It was a good thing, and a lot of important cultural issues were brought to light during the Harlem Renaissance. One of the most important figures of the time was the African-American writer W.E.B. Du Bois. In his book, The Souls of Black Folk, in 1903, Du Bois wrote that African-Americans suffered from something called double consciousness. They had their own self-image. But at the same time, they saw themselves through the eyes of white America. In response, the New Negro Movement, another name for the Harlem Renaissance, urged African Americans to take pride in themselves and their history. Right, the word Negro isn't used much anymore. It's outdated, and many people find it offensive. Anyway, writers like Langston Hughes, Zora Neale Hurston, and County Cullen drew on unique African-American rhythms to describe their experiences. Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, and Bessie Smith developed swing and jazz music from the blues and gospel of enslaved people. William H. Johnson, James Van Der Zee, and Romare Bearden used African motifs and folktales in their artwork and performers like Josephine Baker and Paul Robeson became international superstars. The Renaissance was so influential that Harlem grew into something of a brand name, a powerful symbol of a broader cultural awakening among all African Americans. An all-black basketball team from Chicago even adopted it as their hometown. The Harlem Globetrotters have been wowing audiences ever since. But the Harlem Renaissance wasn't all about arts and entertainment. The movement also had a sharp political edge. Black activist newspapers peaked in popularity. One of the most successful was The Negro World, started by Marcus Garvey. He used the platform to promote the concept of Pan-Africanism, the push for unity among all people of African descent. Garvey was also an early champion of black nationalism, the desire to carve out a wholly separate country for African Americans. It was a cornerstone of his Back to Africa campaign, which called for a return to their ancestral homeland. Yep, African Americans were pushing boundaries across all aspects of society. Black businesses began to flourish, creating a growing middle class. Like Madam C.J. Walker, who turned her cosmetics line into a million-dollar empire. Altogether, the artists and thinkers of this period helped mobilize the larger black population. Young African Americans took advantage of improved access to higher education. This opened up new career paths and opportunities to attain advanced degrees. Perhaps most importantly, people, black and white, began the push for racial integration, planting the seeds of what would eventually become the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Uh...